Hello. This is our last lecture. It's a wrap-up lecture, um, kind of covering a little bit of everything in our multicultural children's literature class. But I wanted to, to introduce you to a concept, children's books as a radical act. Now, this, is, this isn't my makings here. It comes from Maya Gonzalez, a fabulous, amazing children's uh, author and uh, illustrator. She's won awards. She's just so crazy good. I love her. And she said, I believe that creating children's books has the potential to be one of the most radical things you can do. She goes on to say, a powerful tool for social change, children's books offer the potential to engage all of our creative facilities to transform the stories we as people of color, queer, or indigenous people heard as children that often did not include us. Using a holistic approach, creating a children's book can heal and strengthen the creator as much as the reader. So I kind of love all of that, and I feel like I, I totally get what she's saying, and that I also believe that reading and sharing diverse own voice children's books uh, with the intent of changing the narrative of our society is a, a radical act. So believing that the books that are produced by these radical uh, artists um, get into the hands of children and children reading them have uh, some transformations and obviously the adults reading them as well, which we've talked about before. So you remember this quote that children as, as early as age five and some younger really in some of the, the research, research shows that, that they already have started forming the concepts of race and gender and, and coming up with, you know, what's right and what's wrong about all of that. And also I, I added in the brackets, they are coming up with all sorts of other things as well, right? Sexism, ableism, phobia of LGBTQ or xenophobia, just all those things that we've kind of reiterated over this uh, core semester. So by reaching children with fabulous, radical, diverse children's literature, we can really change things. And we know that things need to be changed, right? So we, when we've looked at some of the graph, graphs and saw that 50% of new children's books are written about and typically by white authors. We look here at, um, this is 2019, then we're looking at the uh, books that are published every year. Uh, this is a CCBC's really great place that does these stats. They, they've kind of fallen down a little bit with COVID because they can't get, the, get accurate figures. But if you look at all of this, we look at the new books published um, in 2019, with one, at least one good character, one primary character of these uh, different representations, identities below, that you see very easily 41, over 41% 41 are, are white, right? And then we have other categories, African, Native, Asian, Latinx, Pacific, animal, other, the animals and the others, the animals and the trucks and, and all of that are, are number two. What's that saying, right? We've also looked a, a lot about um, of the impact of gender bias in looking at gender representation and, and the continuum of gender for sure in terms of transgender and everywhere else on the, that gender line. But I was kind of focusing right now on the uh, books that show more females as front runners, you know, as the, the, the main star in these books. We know that that is still um, not happening as wonderfully as we'd like it to happen. But... But there are radical books out there, and you just got to find them, right? You just got to find them, and more are coming along. But really importantly, we have to also look at those, those radical books or diverse books or multicultural, authentic books. We got to look at them with a cr critical eye, right? Because there's, I'm tripped up all the time, as I've said before, that I'm tricked by books that I think are, are great, and they're not so great, and because I come from it from my white privileged perspective, and my socialization, and, and all of that, so it's sometimes it, you, it's hard to wade through all of the things that make me who I am to discern if that book, in fact, is, is, a, is a fabulous book, right? So, um, just came across this I've read a couple of articles recently, and the careful selection of children's literature, both in the home and school environment, has long been understood as a hallmark of young child's, a young child's emergent 
literary experience. So really, I kind of mumbled that quote, but basically like it's really important to have gr good books for children when they're young because emergent, they're just like coming into being. They're just thinking about the world more, right? Even age two, three, four, five, six, they're just emerging into the world and saying, hey, th something's not fair here, right? And this quote that I love, I've got to just show it again. Books have the power to shape and shift how children view the world. So important. So what does that mean? It means we got to have good books for them, right? We have to have books that represent everybody. And, and it, this uh, is a fairly new quote that, from an article that I read at the heart of the uh, picture books lies the powerful concept of representation. We've talked about that all semester, right? The idea of representation, how how important it is. So when those stories are told and, and how the characters are presented and what kid, oh kid, that's supposed to be kind, what kind of problems are posed and how problems are resolved, all of that's really important, right? All those things are giving our kids messages, are, are, are helping continue stereotypes, are to bust down stereotypes. And we know when Ch Chimamanda the Gozi Adichie talks about the danger of a single story. She's saying single stories are okay, but if that's all we're giving kids, then we're just going to get stereotypes. They can't become the only story. And I think one of the most powerful things that we talked about and continue to talk about, and maybe you're tired of hearing this terminology, but the whole thing that Rudin Sims Bishop posed like a million years ago, right? That, that children need books that are mirrors, that allow them to see themselves and their own experiences, right? Not just white experiences. Let's see everybody's experiences. And they need books that are windows so they can look out and see other people's experiences and compare them to theirs and realize that, you know, they're not, that they don't have spotlight aid on them necessarily, right? And then one thing that we didn't talk about too much, but the whole idea of sliding glass doors, that those doors allow them to enter into the world of other people's experiences, other children's experiences, and give them the idea that, yeah, that we have, there's some differences, but there's some likeness, and there's all sorts of things. So that's where we get the empathy. That's where we get, we embrace and celebrate diversity, right, with those sliding glass door books that also then make us think, hmm, maybe there's something more to this. Maybe we'll, if we understand other cultures, other identities, other things, then we're not going to be... I was going to say, we're not going to be asshats. Sorry, I, 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 don't know. I don't even know what that means really, but we're just not going to be jerks, right? We're going to teach kids not to be jerks. We're going to teach kids to look at the world through these lenses, through mirrors, through windows, through, through sliding glass doors, and, and, and accept so much more and embrace so much more, right? And the um, mirror books and the sliding glass door books, they're really good for white kids too. When we Sometimes when we think of multicultural children's literature, we think, oh, that's just for, we want to make sure that we get, you know, uh, non-white folks uh, represented, right? But the deal is that we want to get white folks, white kids, especially as we start talk about how early racism and sexism and all that starts, we want them to understand that there's more out there than whiteness. And if whiteness is always the default, then everything else must be different, must be not normal. And so that's a really misleading kind of idea and relationship, how we view ourselves again, uh, amongst other people that aren't white, right? So it's a, it's a pretty powerful thing for us to see that white kids need this stuff as much as non-white kids need this stuff, right? So it's, I think that that's an interesting concept, but it's a really important and powerful one that we all need this education. Because look at this. Imagine a world in which all children could see themselves in the pages of a book. Now you think like, what's the big deal? Because we've been looking at all these fabulous books, right? We've looked at so many different um, authentic, uh, diverse, um, own voices, people writing the, the stories, right? We've looked at all of that stuff and there's some really great things out there, right? And like the really pretty much five, six, seven years, we've got some powerful representation. But as I've said before, if I went into some of these classrooms on uh, in the elementary schools on this island, I mean, they're getting a little better for sure. Are, so, are these books going to be here? Are, are those books going to be the ones recommended by teachers or read by teachers in the classroom? Are, are those books going to get into the hands of parents who are reading these books, the picture books to their kids? Those are all the problems. We need to pile on, on, pile on this stuff, right? We need to make sure that there's so much out there.
so much out there for us to look at. And so when we look at the windows and mirrors, we're pretty certain about that. We got that squared away, but we still need to work a lot on the, the sliding glass door um, concept of uh, uh, Rudine Sims Bishop's um, kind of uh, ideas with the mirrors, windows, and sliding glass doors. Because what we got to do with sliding glass doors, it helps us to, um, to get out there and see what's fair for kids from a kid's perspective. What's, what's fair and not fair? What do I have that other kids might not have? How can I be um, a great citizen? How can I, I learn to do things? All those things are so important. And they happen for kids. They happen in good books that have those sliding glass doors. Books that serve as sliding glass doors are somewhat akin to a window experience, but with the key difference. The reader is changed by the book. So that's pretty pretty cool. And maybe you can think of, of books or stories or even movies, you know, of late that, that have just actually changed you and made, you know, that that's now become a, one of your points of references, right? You come back to that. And books do this. Books do this for all of us. And books do it for, for, for kids that even can't read yet, right? Because picture books have powerful illustrations and they're so important. So the whole concept is that when readers move through a sliding glass door, they are changed and often empowered to take action. And that's what we're, that's what social justice is all about, is to take action, right? And it doesn't mean that children need to, like, as I've said, you know, you can't just rebuild everything. We have to look at it from a, a developmentally appropriate way, right, a fashion. But kids do stuff. Look what some young, young kids are doing right now, young adults and, and teenagers and stuff. I mean, they're out there protesting, right, about about gun violence in their school. They're out there talking about the environment. They're they're out there because they know it's important, and they they can know they know it at an early age. And you know, when we're talking about preschool age, we're talking about being kind of um, tuned in tuned into your neighborhoods and your communities and just your family culture and in your in your city culture. And there's ways you can do things. It's not, you know, we have to look at at. Uh, charity versus justice. There's a lot of nuances of, of, about how to do this, you know, respectfully and um, in, intentionally and all of that. And, and kids pick it up. Uh, and so multicultural literature right here, it's, it's a responsive tool. It empowers teachers and students to start caring, right? Start caring about their immediate circles and then the receding ones, or not receding, ascending I don't know. You can, you know what I'm talking about. So these books are a tool that can help save the world. And I, I think you probably heard me say that. And I really feel like authentic, own voice, great, multicultural children's books can help save the world. I'm all about that. So I'm just going to read this quote. I, I've been reading a lot of quotes, but they're so good. They're better than what I can say. Ultimately, if we truly believe that children's books serve as windows, mirrors, and sliding glass doors, and if we believe that children's books don't merely reflect but help create the reality in which we live, and if we believe that children's books shape the minds and lives of young readers, pretty powerful stuff, right, all that? it's Look at that. It's pretty powerful stuff, and I believe it then it's es essential that the field ceases the perpetual spinning that allows those in positions of power and privilege to stay perplexed or continue to, like, I need some more time to think about this, right? I need to do some more research. I'm an ally, but I got a lot of work to do first without doing anything else and ultimately leaving the field unchanged. So if that happens, then it's time to take action, right? And there's ways that we can take action there's so many ways we can take action. And for me, as a proponent of, of fabulous picture books for children and, and making sure that they have them in their hands and making sure that I'm, I'm working with these children and with these books in a very careful and respective and joyful way, then those are kind of, that, that's action as far as I'm concerned. And, you know, we've talked about different ways that you could, you know, just get some great books into the hands of the, your your um, kids and your friends of kids and kids you know and adults you know, just get some of these great books in their hands, right? 
favorite quote. Some things one can see for oneself, others things depend on the telling of the tale. And there's a way to do it. Thank you.